we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, our thoughts and our actions, our sitting and st standing, you know them all. What is it that we have to do first? Help us to know this. And with these promised blessings, may we pass them down to our children. May we be patriots to our country and our people. And for world, for the, man, ma the peace of mankind, may we do this precious work. At this time, may it be a blessed time where we realize what we need to do first. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's, let's greet the person next to us. We will do more well. We will do more well. We will surely do more well. Let's greet the person next to us again. Let's live smiling. But is this something that we can do? We say this, but if I try to smile, then that's crazy. But if God gives you joy in your heart and you smile that, is faith. Romans chapter 15 verse 13. So what is it we have to do first? When God created all of creation, you know what you need first. You know, does he say, oh, you know what? He, he, he created everything first and then created us. So you do everything oppositely. You know, let's find Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. What we have to do first is his kingdom and his righteousness first, which is to find our genealogy. Because we don't know what we have, what we have to do first, and then we change the order. You know, how many times am I? How many times I tell you about wearing your clothes in the wrong order? If you wear a suit and then you wear your underwear on top, then you're crazy. You you agree with that? But the fundamentals of a life of faith, of becoming a man, you know, you don't even know the order. So Matthew chapter six. So Matthew chapter one verse one. Is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, what comes first? Let's read together. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. You say you need money, you need this and that. Whatever it is you need in the world, if you seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, Will he add all these things or not? He says he'll give all these things. But you keep changing the order. So where? When do you become righteous? Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, it's by the blood of Christ. So because it happens by the blood of Christ, without four-step repentance, his kingdom and his righteousness can't come upon you. So if you're always doing false step repentance and you make his kingdom and right, his kingdom first, then it's not we who do it, does it. Who does it for us? It's not we who do it. Who does it for us? Does he say you do it? Let's read it again. So even this one Bible verse, you know, you don't even know it properly, no matter how much I tell you. If you go to your house, you haven't even written this up. So let's write, uh, let's read. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. So it's when you do this, then what, what will happen with all these things? Does he say you do it and you make it? But you keep doing things by your strength. Someone who seeks his kingdom and righteousness first, who does four step repentance properly and is a sheep, they don't do things by their strength. You know, I'll do it. That's someone who loves money. If you love money, then you're evil in 10,000 things. That person's worrying. Not just worrying, they kill themselves. That person can't even say amen. Someone who worries, they can never say amen because they're outside of Christ. It won't come out. So it says to seek his kingdom and righteousness first. Then will anything be lacking? No, he will give all things. So does that mean, you know, health or blessings are not included? Children, 
an, a good name, you know, they'll, he'll give everything. And it's not just me, even to your children, you'll do more and more well. So you become someone who can be a patriot to your country. So he says he'll add all these things. Does that mean heaven's missing? So he's given us such a precious promise. But we don't do what comes first. And we keep saying money comes first. Why is it that you're not able to earn money and you're, you're suffering? Because you don't know what comes first. It's your, your orders reversed. If you reverse that order, you know, instead of going, you end up coming. So what is it that God says to do first? He says to become righteous. So he's saying, first become righteous. So if you're not doing well, he says, I'll make everything do well. Just become righteous. That's what you have to do first. So how do you become righteous? Well, you have to be without sin. So Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, it's by Christ you find your genealogy. If you find your genealogy, you become sheep. You become righteous. So the first thing you should be doing is, is to do Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Then he will add all these things. So then why are you worrying about your children? All you have to do is become righteous. Why are you worrying about money? All you have to do is become righteous. But if you, if you receive money like that, then you don't love God you'll end up ruling over it. But if you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to earn some money. Let's find Proverbs chapter 24, verse 1. It's the evil. Once they earn some money, it seems like in their own eyes that they're prosperous. So people try to stick to that. But that is the worst of curses. If you stand next to a big building and when it starts to collapse, then even all the relatives that are far off, even they all get they all um, get smashed. So let's read chapter 24, verse 1. Do not be envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them. So it says, don't even be near them. So who? Who is evil? Well, if you're not righteous, then you're evil. So if you become righteous first, so will he, will he give or not give? So why is it then you won't become righteous? Is it hard to become righteous? Well, it is hard because it's the mystery of God, but we've received forced out repentance. So as long as you become righteous, will he give all things or not? He will. If you become righteous, so if you're about to be given something, then the more you have, the more you worry. So even now you're worrying. So if you're given more, you're going to worry more. But if you're righteous, then you receive happiness. Romans chapter 4 verse 6 if you're righteous if you seek his kingdom first then and then you receive happiness you receive joy and thanksgiving it's so, to someone like that even if they're given they'll still have joy and thanksgiving so to someone who first does this that's who will give all things is it our men to, to the father's promise so the evil doing well you know, they're going to be struck, so don't even go near them. It says, depart from them. But you don't depart. And these idiots who stick to that, they're asking for death. So to the righteous, he says he'll give all things. But if you're not righteous, someone who loves money, they're, they're evil in 10,000 things. So you look at your, your you know, present reality. You know, there are so many people who end up going to prison because of money. Someone with 10,000 evils, you know, they don't even have shame. But So why are you and I here? Have we come because of money or have we come to become righteous? That's it. So Proverbs, let's find chapter... Why? Why put your heart on things that are so uh, worthless? Let's, let's, um, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 4 and 5. Do not weary yourself to gain wealth. Cease from your consideration of it. When you set your eyes on it, it is gone. For wealth certainly makes itself wings, like an eagle that flies toward the heavens. Amen. So why do you put your goals on, on senseless things? So that's why, because you put your order 
in reverse. That's why he can't even give you money blessings. You know, those who seek his kingdom first, to the righteous, he gives all things. So the one who makes us alive or dead gives us blessings or takes, takes them away. Let's find 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. It says, your actions, he puts on a scale and he calculates it. If it's on a scale, how scary, because he's so exact. You see these scales? What's a scale? He's saying, I'm going to see what your actions are. Have you put his kingdom and righteousness first? Where do these excuses and grumblings come from? God says, if you grumble, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, he's going to kill you himself. Those who grumble and make excuses, they're not seeking the kingdom first. Their heart's in some way wrong. So they're grumbling because things aren't happening according to their greed. So if you grumble and you hate to keep God in your heart, someone that filthy, three and four generations receive the death sentence. You see... Those children, they don't want to die. And so they depart from their parents. They become enemies with their parents and won't listen to them. Why? Because these parents are killing three and four generations. They're doing these things to receive the death sentence. So the children are like, you know what? Because of my filthy parents, I'm getting the death sentence. And that's why they won't listen to the parents and they become enemies and, and leave. And yet these parents, they don't even know this. And then you say, oh, I'm going to try and do something psychologically or get some counseling. The, the demons inside of that children, they know. And they're like, I'm going to receive the death sentence unto parents like this. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 and 6. Three and four generations will be, will be, will be ruined. And so they become enemies with their parents and fight and leave. So what are my children like? If you have problems, you need to realize. If you realize rightly, you become a man. If you can't realize, then you become a beast. Not just any old beast, a beast that's perishing. Psalm chapter 49, verse 20. This is God's word. So we've come here to do well. Today we have to realize. So firstly, we have to become righteous. We have to seek his kingdom and righteousness first. Then he will give all things. But what is it that I seek first? Oh, God, please give me money. Is it money? Is it my health? My Oh, please give me health. Are you asking for death? Why do you change the order? If you're righteous, he'll give all things. Let's live properly. So 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 5, 6, and 7. So you can read the rest at home. Those who were full hire themselves out for bread. But those who were hungry cease to hunger. Even the barren gives birth to seven. But she who has many children languishes. Jehovah kills and makes alive. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. Jehovah makes poor and rich. He brings low. He also exalts. Amen. So to you and I, has God put the blessings far away or has he put it straight in front of us? Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15, he's put it in front of me. So at this time, we can receive the blessings that have been put in front of us. What blessings? All things. But why can't we receive it? Because we keep changing the order. What, without repenting, you expect to eat? That's what comes first. But because you're not doing this, that's why it's not working. Who is it that makes a life or dead? Who gives money and takes it away? So everything in life and death, it's Jehovah who does it. Well, who does Jehovah have a relationship with? With the sheep. Let's find Psalms chapter 100, verse 3. If you say something's not working, it's because you you change what comes first. No matter, no matter how clean you say you are, you have to repent. You, how you're living in front of God, you know, so if you don't do this, you'll die. Three and four generations will, will, will die. 
So if you're ruining your, your children, your household, you're going to become a patriot. And that's why Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, unless you're righteous, you cannot become a patriot. Because you're not a patriot, that's why you're always caught up in money and, and causing 10,000 problems. Because you're not righteous, because you're a goat, that's why it doesn't work. You have to become a sheep. The goat, everywhere they're put, they're always, I'll do it. You have to become a sheep. So Jehovah only has a relationship with sheep. Let's read it. Know that Jehovah himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen. So does Jehovah also raise the goats? No, he only raises the sheep. Goats have no no relationship with Jehovah. They, they're just only um, included when he's making alive or dead. So, so to make dead. So who are the sheep? Let's find Matthew chapter, oh, let's find, sorry, Psalms chapter 23. And we're going to read from verse 1 and 2. So Jehovah is my shepherd. So then I have to become a sheep. Jehovah, who makes alive or dead, gives money and takes it away. Jehovah can put demons in or take them out. Jehovah is my shepherd. So all I have to do is become a sheep. So then what happens if I become a sheep? I shall not want. What won't he give us? He'll give us all things. Career doing well. When Sodom and Gomorrah was ruined, how many righteous were needed for it to not to be ruined? Ten. So... Because we have 10 righteous in Seoul and Busan and Greece, that's why a country does well. So that's why, like Samoda, Sodom and Gomorrah, we're not ruined. But why is it you keep trying to become a goat? Instead of, so it's not just saving myself and my children, it's to save the country and bring about world peace. So let's, let's become a sheep. So verse 2, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. It's not I go to the green pastures or I go to the quiet waters. Someone who does it by their strength, they're a goat. They'll be ruined. Don't do things by your own strength. But you have to depend on him completely. That's a sheep. Someone who says, I'll do it. You're worrying because you're doing it. That's a goat. If you can't live with joy, then you're a goat. If you don't have thanksgiving, you're a goat. So the sheep and the goats, let's find Matthew chapter 25, verse 37. So then you'll see that the, the sheep are the righteous. So we'll all realize this. Matthew chapter 25, verse 37. I'll read it. Then the righteous will answer him. So it's the righteous who answer him. If you read in verse 33, he puts the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. So who are the sheep? They're the righteous. So it says to see, seek his kingdom and righteousness first and he'll add all these things. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. So firstly, it's his kingdom. That's what comes first. So to become righteous, that's what comes first. But what kind of person am I? Am I able to go to heaven? Am I able to save my children? If I'm not righteous, then I kill three and four generations. So who's going to stay under parents like that to die? They're like, that bastard, is that my parent? And they... And they rise up against them. Is that even my mother? They don't listen. And then you blame your your teachers saying, oh, the school's taught wrongly or the, the government hasn't done a good job or education. You know, why seek these excuses? When does God say, make excuses and grumble? He says, you find thanksgiving. If you do forced to repentance, you have thanksgiving. Please, let's do well. So first, you have to become righteous. So you have to first do four-step repentance. So when you go out, whatever you do, 
whether you meet your children, your family, or your relatives, or or your clients in your business, firstly, you have to repent. If you see something wrong, to say, that's my sin. So all you have to do is start by repenting. But instead of repenting, you say, oh, how dirty is that person? Oh, how filthy is that person? Let's live properly. So this should be working, but it's because you're right, not righteous that it doesn't work. Let's read again. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. So he says, I will add all these things. Who says he'll do this? Jehovah God. It's only Jehovah who is our God. In other words, other religions, they won't work because they don't have Jehovah. It's only Jehovah who is our God. It is so sad. It's so pathetic. Psalms 100 verse 3 says only Jehovah is our God. What does he do? He makes alive, dead. He makes, he does everything. He gives money, takes it away. And he says he will add all these things to the sheep, to the righteous. If we're not righteous, then we kill three and four generations. So something this easy where it should work. So if you... If you get rid of your sins and you become righteous, are you tormented? No, God gives you all joy and happiness. So if you've received this, why is your face so blue like that? It's something strange. It's saying that you haven't received. Let's greet the person next to us. Let's receive. Let's receive. So what are you going to receive when there are blessings and curses in front of you? So God, he gives blessings upon blessings. You know, when are you going to receive blessings if you just say the single? You know, it's blessings upon blessings. And they're in front of you, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. So all of those blessings in front of you, why do you leave those and you go take the disasters? So let's say to the person next to us, now let's change. Now let's change it. Let's change it. Let's change it. You know, let's only take the blessings. Let's take all things, all the good things. Because God says he will give. When will he give? When you're a sheep. When you're righteous. The sheep doesn't do it of their own accord. They're guided to the green pastures and waters. So if you're repenting, God guides you. When the rice is about to be cooked, the pot knows. It 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 makes this sound. But when it still isn't ready, it's it's busy and it's huffing and puffing. But when it's all done, you just hear this. And then once in a while, you hear a little bubble going. And then when it's fully cooked, even then... You, then when it's fully cooked, you don't even hear that. And then later you hear a little bit of rattling. But if you just open it during the rattling, then you're not going to get that nice scorched rice at the bottom. It's when you get that scorched rice that you have that, you can have that yummy tea. The, the scorched rice tea. So now let's become righteous. Let's act completely and save our children. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. For me to do well and to save my children. Today may we receive all these blessings from now. A new start as a righteous person, as a sheep, a new start. Let's greet the person next to us. Congratulations on becoming a sheep. Congratulations on becoming a sheep. Let's call upon the Lord three times. No matter how shortly I try to do this, you know, you have to at least get to dessert. Let's surely do well. Firstly, so in other words, it's sheep. So first, sheep. If you become a sheep, all your desires will be fulfilled. The Almighty One will do it all to your children. 
Let's receive these blessings and do well. Let's do more well. Let's call upon the Lord three times. Lord. 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 We've lived wrongly all this time. And even if we have this scary disaster, may we become a sheep, a sheep and change it to blessings. May my children become sheep and may it change to blessings. <laughs> 